Live from your local election headquarters, this is 12 News Now. The polls have closed and the results are in. Thank you for joining us at 1030. I'm Mike Montecalvo. And I'm Shannon Heggie. Let's get right into the big race of the night. This is an historic one. Rhode Island's open congressional seat. Democrat Gabe Amo has defeated Republican Gary Leonard. Amo making history as the first person of color to ever be elected to Congress from Rhode Island. And we have team coverage tonight. 12 News political analyst Joe Fleming is standing by and reporter Matt Paddock will have more on the races for mayor in southeastern Massachusetts. But first, let's send it over to politics editor Ted Nisi live in Pawtucket at Gabe Amos campaign headquarters for the night. Ted. Well, Mike Shannon, the victory party here at Gabe Amos headquarters is winding down. We're at the Guild in Pawtucket, but there was jubilation here when WPRI called that race barely 10 minutes after the polls closed because the results were so overwhelmingly in Amos' favor. He spoke to his supporters a short time after that, and here's some of what he had to say. I am honored for the first time to say that I am your congressman elect. I went to vote with my mom earlier today. And when, when I was eight years old helping my mother study for the citizenship test, I never could have imagined that I would go with her to cast her ballot to vote for her son for the United States Congress. And we spoke with the congressman-elect live at 10 o'clock. He said he'd received a congratulatory phone call from President Biden. Also on hand here tonight, his parents, who were, as you'd expect, beaming with pride. I spoke to his father shortly before the election. He said his seeing his son elected to Congress is more than he ever dreamed of when he immigrated to the United States seeking a better life for his children. I mean, this is part of my uh, formative experiences, right? Summit Liquors on Hartford Avenue in Providence. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Gabriel Amo Sr. bought the store in 1994. How you doing, amigo? 15 years after he arrived in Rhode Island from Ghana. Yes, sir. And it's where Gabe Amo spent much of his childhood. A lot of Saturday mornings when I was younger, uh, I'd you know, wake up, my dad would pick me up, and we'd come right here. Amo grew up in Pawtucket and took to politics early. He got his first job on Sheldon Whitehouse's 2006 U.S. Senate campaign, going on to work for President Obama, Governor Raimondo, and President Biden. Last spring, to his father's dismay, Amo quit the White House to run for Rhode Island's open congressional seat, winning a historic and surprisingly easy victory in a crowded Democratic primary. Among those celebrating, his mother, Wedi Sokri, a nurse who immigrated to Rhode Island from Liberia. You'd be the first person of color if you are elected. How do you think about that piece of it, or do you? Well, I often tell people I ran to make a difference, not to make history, but I know I stand on the shoulders of so many who came before me, whether they were people of color or not. I'm, I'm really proud of him. Amo's father, emotional on the eve of the election. I'm overwhelmed, I'm happy, I'm proud of my son for all his achievements, you know. And hopefully, by the end of tomorrow, God's grace, he'll be the, he'll be the winner. Back live now at the AMO Victory Party at the Guild in Pawtucket as it's winding down. And because this was a special election, AMO won't really have a honeymoon between winning the election and being sworn in. He's expected to be sworn in as soon as next week, just in time to take a vote on that looming government shutdown. Live in Pawtucket, Ted Nisi, 12 News. Ted, thank you very much. And 12 News was there as Gary Leonard's election watch party in Jamestown. Here's what some of he had to say about AMO in his concession speech tonight. We've tried uh, to reach out to uh, Gabe Amo tonight uh, to congratulate him, uh, and and I and I he's a he's a good man, and and I and I hope he becomes a great congressman. We now have the results of three mayoral races in southeastern Massachusetts over in Fall River. Incumbent Paul Coogan defeating former mayor and Bristol County District Attorney Sam Sutter, as you can see by the votes there. Over in New Bedford, incumbent John Mitchell keeping his seat, defending Tyson Moultrie tonight. And up in Taunton, incumbent Shauna O'Connell defeats Ed Carrera with 59% of the votes. And for more election team coverage, Matt Paddock is live in Fall River tonight. Matt joins us at Mayor Coogan's watch party at Our Lady of Light Club. Matt. 
Shannon Mike, the announcement coming just before 9 o'clock that incumbent mayor, Fall, Fall River Mayor Paul Coogan had won re-election and that news was met with a loud round of applause and a standing ovation. Now at this hour, the crowd has slowly dwindled. Coogan himself leaving just before 10 o'clock, stating he'd been on the front lines picketing since 7 o'clock this morning. During his victory speech, some major talking points for him. Those were infrastructure, public safety, and the people of Fall River. But when it came to the battle of the mayoral race, Coogan not mincing his words. Try to anticipate what someone's going to say because you don't know what's coming out of their mouth. I was really stunned at a couple of the things that uh, my opponent said, and I don't think they were in any way positive on the city of Fall River. He wasn't he wasn't running Paul Coogan down. He was running down a city, and there's a big difference with that. And uh, and I don't think people should have to think about a candidate doing that to try to get a few votes. And two other mayoral races being held in the southeastern Massachusetts tonight. Both incumbents, New Bedford Mayor John Mitchell and Taunton Mayor Shauna O'Connell, reclaiming the throne. Hey, we made a lot of progress over the years in public safety and our schools and economic development, but there's a lot of work ahead. And uh, I get up every morning and, and get after it for the benefit of our residents. We have, um, you know, a record that seems to be, you know, a recipe for success in improving our finances, improving our infrastructure, strengthening public safety, and improving our economic development. Um, so we look forward to continuing all of those things for the people of Taunton as I work full time, 100% of the time, to be their full time mayor. And coming up tonight, new at 11, Mayor Paul Coogan getting real with us about the vulnerabilities about running in a mayoral race. Reporting live in Fall River, Matt Paddock, 12 News. Matt, thank you. And voters in eight Rhode Island towns went to the polls today to vote on more than $1 billion in spending. Right now, all of the school-related bonds have passed, except for the so-called mega bond over in North Kingstown, where voters vetoed a $222 million bond to consolidate two middle schools, build a brand new facility, and build a new public safety complex. Joining us now is 12 News political analyst Joe Fleming. Joe, you said earlier when you saw the massive turnout right. for this question that you thought it meant this might get rejected. Absolutely. I think when you see people coming out, they're coming out to vote against something. Normally, you have a very small turnout for a special election school bonds. However, the opposition really developed a good campaign talking about the mega bond, how it was just too big and was going to raise taxes in the town of North Kingstown. They really organized and they came out and got the voters out today. And also combining the bond you said Absolutely. was a problem here. I think when they combined this public works into the school bond, I think people said, wait a minute, now they're really trying to push the issue. They're trying to sneak a public works, I mean, public safety complex in by attaching it to something voters normally support. Mm. So I think a lot of people were upset with those types of things. All right, Joe, we're going to move over to Barrington, where voters have approved a $250 million bond for school upgrades, 64% to 36%. The town of Bristol has overwhelmingly approved borrowing $200 million so the district can replace Mount Hope High School and renovate other school buildings. And similar results in Warren. The two towns share a school district. So this was a unique situation where in order to pass, the measure needed to win support from a majority of voters between both communities. Heading up north to Cumberland, where a $52 million bond to rebuild B.F. Norton Elementary School has been approved by voters there. In East Greenwich, the town proposed borrowing up to $150 million to renovate, rebuild, or build from the ground up six school buildings. That measure passed easily with 69% of voters supporting it. And over in Lincoln, voters overwhelmingly approved a $25 million bond to make upgrades at all four of the town's elementary schools. And for the bond question over in Middletown, it was a close one. 52% of the voters support spending up to $190 million to build a combination middle high school as well as make repairs and improvements to other schools in town. But 48% are against it. And Joe, these results came down to the wire. This was really the only bond question that it was pretty late before we knew it, what the results was, was going to be. On the machines, the bond lost by about 70 votes. It was when the early voting numbers came in, it put it ahead slightly. And when the mail ballots came in, it put it ahead a little bit more. So again, this was a very close one. But again, it was $190 million. People are starting to get nervous with these huge bonds, especially with interest rates so mm -hmm. high right now. Yeah, that's what we keep hearing. Our Joe, thank you. And uh, voters living in Rhode Island Senate District 1 in Providence have chosen a new state senator. Democrat Jake Bissellian defeated Republican Nyoka Powell with 83% of the vote. Bissellian will be filling the seat left vacant following the death of Majority Whip Mary Ellen Goodwin in April. 
Please stay with 12 News for all of your election coverage. Right now on WPRI.com, we have up-to-the-minute vote tallies, a bond tracker with a breakdown of all of the various bond question results and more. Again, that's on WPRI.com.